In this video, we will consider a very basic question. Where did all of the matter which makes up our planet and you and me come from? The answer to this question involves things which happened during all of time, all the way back to the formation of the universe in the Big Bang. Most of you have probably seen some version of this table before. This is the periodic table which organizes all of the known elements, both the 90 naturally occurring ones and others which have been made experimentally. The natural ones are the basic building blocks out of which planets, stars, and even people are formed. The periodic table organizes these elements from lightest to heaviest according to their chemical properties. Nucleosynthesis is the name that scientists give to the processes which form the elements. We are going to look at three different ways that processes in our universe form the naturally occurring elements found on the periodic table. The first of these processes occurred early in the history of the universe during the time of the Big Bang when the very first atoms were formed. The other two occur in stars. The very first atoms in our universe formed during the Big Bang. These first atoms were almost all hydrogen, the simplest and lightest of the elements. At this time, most of the other elements of the periodic table did not yet exist. The rest of the elements of the periodic table formed during the rest of the history of the universe, from the time of the very first stars, continuing through to today. Ordinary stellar nucleosynthesis is even happening in the sun right now. Through nuclear fusion, lighter elements are combined to form heavier and heavier elements. The first step in this chain typically is the fusion of hydrogen atoms left over from the Big Bang. Fusion of hydrogen atoms produces helium and releases a lot of energy in the process. This is the main energy source for stars. This process of nuclear fusion in stars can produce all of the lighter elements of the periodic table. It can make elements from helium to iron, the ones shown on this illustration. There are also many more, much heavier elements on the periodic table, but these require a different process. To make heavier elements requires different processes which involve a lot more energy. This can happen at the end of the life of a relatively massive star. Such stars become unstable when they reach the end of the line for ordinary nuclear fusion. At this point, they can go out with a bang in enormous explosions called novae and supernovae. These explosions produce the conditions needed to form the elements heavier than iron. This illustration shows the elements heavier than iron, which can be formed during stellar explosions. These elements are found in many objects throughout our solar system. And our Earth is in part made out of the remnants of ancient exploded stars. There is a lot of variation in the abundances of different elements. This chart shows that hydrogen is still the most abundant element. And most of the elements which form in ordinary stars are more abundant than those which require stellar explosions. This pattern actually contains important clues about how the elements were formed. In summary, this all points to three main ways to form elements. During the Big Bang, which made lots of hydrogen, some helium, and very little else. By fusion during the life of ordinary stars, which makes most elements between helium and iron. And through exploding stars, which produces most of the elements heavier than iron. Before these processes occurred, it would not have been possible to form our solar system because the necessary materials would not have existed yet. Thus, a long history of the universe had to pass by before all of the ingredients were available to form our solar system and planet Earth. 